We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Now, this is Jeremy McFarland for the Footballers Family Podcast. I want to thank you for listening and, and tuning in. Make sure that while you do this, you rate, review, and uh, help me to make this podcast even better. Make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, can go on to our website at the sportshistorynetwork.com and, and look at all the other great podcasts that we have. Uh, while you're also at it, uh, make sure you get in touch with me if you want to be on this podcast. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at Jeremy underscore McFarland or on the Footballist Family Facebook page. I've got a question for you today. How does one tell a story about why he or she likes the team that he or she does? You know, NFL, college, high school, whatever it is. For some, it's memories, probably the first game they went to or the first jersey they bought. Maybe it's the team their parents or grandparents liked. For me, it was one event, the Music City Miracle. Lorenzo Neal to Frank Wycheck to Kevin Dyson. Touchdown Titans, Mike Keith yells out. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. On that day in 2000, I was at a birthday party. Some of the men had a TV in the back watching the game. I just so happened to be right there when this event took place. While I wasn't a big fan of the Tennessee Titans at that time, I got caught up in the moment. I was jumping up and down the screen with the other people at the party. The 90-year-old lady would just have to wait. The Titans had won. Up until that point, Titan mania hadn't really swept Tennessee. Uh, there were a lot of fans, obviously, but it's not what, it's, what it is now. There were sellouts. There were people buying merchandise. But again, it's not what it is now. Houston, the Houston Oilers, which the Tennessee Titans were at one point, wasn't a favorite team for many people here in Tennessee. When you heard of the potential of the Oilers moving here, we thought, okay, who are they? We knew of Earl Campbell. Warren Moon and the like. I knew of them for two reasons. Tech Mobile Super Bowl and Warren Moon destroying my defense and their playoff collapse to the Bills in 1993. I didn't know it then, but that game was the final domino that would eventually fall to lead to the Oilers moving here to Tennessee. Nashville at the time wanted to be a player on the national scene. Memphis did too. Getting an NFL team would do that. Memphis, for those who didn't or don't know, is located on the extreme west of Tennessee, right on the Mississippi River. Nashville is in the middle on the Cumberland River and is the capital of Tennessee. Lots of competition between these two cities. When Bud Adams didn't get the new stadium he wanted in, in Houston, he reached out to the mayor of Nashville, which at the time was Bill Bredesen, and made a deal to move the Oilers to Nashville. Nashville didn't have a stadium yet, so the Oilers played at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. This only lasted one year. Memphis didn't follow a team they went and, that wouldn't stay. If you were to look at the games then, you would see a lot of empty seats at the Liberty Bowl, a lot of empty seats. The Oilers then moved to Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville and played there for two years. They were then known as the Tennessee Oilers. Tennessee doesn't have oil which is kind of funny to, to talk about that. It was then I started to pay attention to them. I'm still a Denver Broncos fan through and through, but I thought they were a close team. I'm going to start paying attention to them. 
I actually own a Tennessee Oiler hat and shirt. I have the hat here, and I will put this on uh, my Facebook page and my uh, Twitter page for you to see. I went to two preseason games. One was the first game in Nashville. The other one was when John Elway came to play. I watched Super Bowl 33 in my dorm room, excuse me, Super Bowl 34 in my dorm room at Freed Hardman. It didn't matter where you were from, Tennessee was everybody's team at that point. I've had the chance numerous times to meet uh, past and present players for the Tennessee Titans. I've got to meet Eddie George. My dad has got to meet Javon Kirst. I've got to meet Frank Wycheck, Bruce Matthews, Jeff Fisher. Uh, even had a chance to meet Vince Young. And I'll tell you what, when you stand next to Vince Young, he makes everybody look small. When you get a chance to see these people face to face, you realize not only are they uh, great big athletes, but they're also human beings. That, and that, that makes it pretty interesting. I had a chance once to meet Chris Johnson. And I looked at him and I said, man, I'm taller than he is. Then I looked at his thighs as he was standing up. I said, there's the reason why I'm not playing in the NFL. And he is, and he is, was a great running back. But if you think about it, these men like Eddie George, Javon Curse, and Steve McNair soon became as familiar to Tennesseans as Davy Crockett, W.C. Handy, and Andrew Jackson. We can recognize Jeff Fisher faster than we could recognize James K. Polk. Needless to say, two-tone blue was everywhere. Up until recently, we have been through some down years, but that didn't stop us from being fans. The games I attended, the training camps I had the chance to attend, and the fans I've talked to all kept a positive outlook. 2019 to 2020, they were both fulfillments of that positivity. It all comes down to what you enjoy. I enjoy watching the Titans, as many of you would enjoy watching your team. I enjoy looking at the NFL app and seeing what the Titans are doing in free agency. It's an enjoyment to, to talk about memories. When my son was two years old and, and two or three years old, he could quote the Music City Miracle. Now, that's good parenting right there. And I was able to talk to Mike Keith and tell him that. And of course, Mike Keith gave me a big smile, so that was great. But, you know, things like that that make sports special. It's a distraction and entertainment. It's an enjoyment. And lately, with the Titans, I've had a lot to enjoy. When I talk about football being family, that's what I mean. My grandfather and I would spend time together talking about the Titans. Those are times that I treasure even to this day. And he's been dead for uh, 15 years. When he died, I got his Titans flag and that that flag that he would fly on the side of his truck. It's very, very special to me. Have fun with your sports. Yell and trash talk and, and have fun, but be civil about it. Cheer, and above all, enjoy what you're doing. As I'm looking around my office, I'm seeing how the Titans have become part of my life. And I know that for each one of you, your teams may have become part of your life as well. Enjoy that. Take time to reflect on that. Look at the history of your sport. Learn about the history of your team. And, number, and above all, show the generations to come just how great football or sports, period, is and how great it is to watch and play. Thank you, and I hope to see you again next week. The 2021 Professional Football Researchers Association Convention will be held at the Gold Jacket Lounge at the Pro Football Hall of Fame during the final weekend of June. Convention speakers will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the NFL. The fee for the convention is $50 for members and $100 for non-members. The fee includes admission to the convention and Pro Football Hall of Fame, meals on Friday evening and Saturday afternoon, and free parking. All convention activities are subject to COVID-19 protocols. For more details, Details, click on the 2021 PFRA convention link at profootballresearchers.org. 
At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row One catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row One Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.